Hello, Professor. The first thing you're going to want to do is go onto our company website, web.stratechsimulations.com. Then click on sign in. Sign in as an instructor or a teaching assistant. And put the username and password that was given to you. Click submit. Go to courses and quotations. Click on create a new course, get a quotation. Pick a course name of your liking. You have the option of putting a course description. Here you select the university where the course will take place. If you're a professor teaching in multiple universities, make sure to select the correct university. What simulation will you be teaching? In this case, MixPro. What's your course type? Is it a full-time program, corporate program, part-time and executive program? In this case, full-time program. How many participants will you have in this course? Let's go with 30 for this example. When do you want your course to start? I suggest you pick the date that you're, you're creating your course. Two, when do you want your course to end? Take note that the end date after that, the students will no longer have access to the simulation. So if you want your students to do some homework assignments or projects after the simulation ends, make sure to put the end date a bit later to give them some time. Your professor name and instructor email will automatically appear here. Who will be purchasing the licenses? Is it the students? The university, or do you already have your packs? For this example, I'm going to go with test course. Then you click on create course. You're about to create a new mixed pro course. Do you wish to continue? You click on yes. After that, you will get a message saying that we will activate your course within 48 hours. We activate the course with, within a few hours. We put 48 hours. For example, if you're creating your course on a Friday evening, we will not validate the course before Monday. Once your course is validated, you will find it here. You click on your course. And here's your course. So you have here you have the basic information, course ID, course name. If you have any additional instructors, they will be listed here. Once your participants are registered, Instead of no registered participants, you will have the number of registered participants. On the right hand side, you have edit course. This is to modify your course profile. Name, description, instructor's emails and dates. Then you have add instructor. This is if you want to add another instructor to your course so that he or she can help you. You simply input the username of the instructor here, and then you click on search. Once you find the instructor, you click on the instructor and click on submit. Then you will see that the instructor's name will appear here. And you can have as many additional instructors as you wish. Here you have email to participants. This is to send emails to participants. You already have a template created here, which you can edit, change completely, and simply click on send. This one is useful after you've registered the students because it will send them all this information, which is all the necessary information that they need in order to access the simulation. Then you have export participant list and it exports the list of participants who have registered in your course to Excel. So next, what you wanna do is create your teams. Click on create teams. Which language do you want to use for this course? For the simulation, we have English or Spanish. You select the language and then click on next. How many participants will you take in the course, we had set 30, so you input the amount here. 
how many teams do you want in your course? Since we recommend three to four participants per team, if we have 30 participants, I'm going to go with 10 teams. Click on next. Make sure that everything looks correct. If you want to edit it, just go to previous. If you find that everything looks fine, click on next. And here, your teams are being created. So as you see, once the teams are created, you see the X appear. The more teams you have, the longer it's going to take to create. You can exit here and come back later while your teams are being created. So what you want to do after you've created your teams is click on download pre-filled participant registration file. Click on that. And you will get this Excel sheet that appears. Click on the Excel. It will open. Click on enable editing. And fill out the sheet with here the paths of the students, the first name of the students, the last name of the students, the email address of the students, and make sure it's the right email address because when you send emails to the participants in your instructor's account, it should be the correct one or else they will not receive it. Then teams, what teams do you wanna assign these participants to? Let's say for example, you wanna assign this participant to team one, this one to team four, this one to team 10. Make sure it's numbers. When you assign teams, it has to be numbers. So in our case, one to 10 for this example. Then you save the file onto your computer. Once you've saved it on the computer, click on upload and process participant registration file. Choose the file onto your computer, choose the file that you saved on your computer. Then upload and process participant registration file. Click on that. Wait a few seconds and you will get another Excel sheet with the results to see if you have correctly registered the participants in the course. If there's any errors, they will show up on the Excel file. So once you've done that, no registered participants will change to, in our case, 30 registered participants or how many ever participants you want in your course. What you do afterwards is go to monitor teams and here you have all your teams. You have the number of participants in your teams. Once they're registered, they will appear here. What decision year the team is in, current decision status, number of errors, the number of warnings. You can enter and see what errors the teams are making or what warnings they have. And you have to click on start decisions for the students to be able to start playing the simulation. If you do not click on start decision, they will not be able to play the simulation. If for some reason you want them to stop making decisions, you can you, you simply click on stop decisions and the decisions will be stopped until you click again on start decision. So once the students have started playing the simulation, you will have another button in the possible actions it's going to say cancel run. And this command is to allow a particular team to rerun its latest decision. This may be useful in case the team made a serious error in its decision, such as mixing the prices of two brands. So a warning message will display explaining that its current results will be erased by this action. If you wish to continue, the team data is restored to its previous state. As for the most recent simulation run just prior to the error, and the year number is decreased by one. Inform the team when this is done so that they can adjust their decisions and rerun the simulation. For example, if they are in year four, they have moved on to year four and, and realized that they made a mistake in year three, you have the possibility of cancel run and they will go back to year three, rectify their mistake and move on. So here we have debrief chart. 
So you have it for each team. You can click on each team and have the information. And the simulation proposes this tool to announce and debrief results at the end of the exercise, which presents a predefined series of graphs and charts, as you see, aimed at disclosing the most important results. If you want to share this with the students, you simply click on one, the, whichever one you want to share with the students. Go to get URL. And you will see this URL that you can copy and paste and send to the students so that they have access to this. Next, you have great team. So this is a built-in tool to grade teams at the end of the course based on their performance in the simulation. You can also grade them throughout the years as they move on, but some professors choose to use this just at the end. So we put the OPI here at 100 as default, but as long as the sum adds up to 100 here, you can put 80 here, 20 here, and 10 here, 10 here, 80 up to you as you wish, it just, the sum has to weigh up, has to, the sum has to weigh to 100. The sum of all weights must be 100. Here, you can configure the grading formula to your liking as well. And lastly, you click on calculate and it will grade your team. Here, we have the descriptions of the key performance indicators and the units for your reference. We have a performance report, which I will show you what it looks like. So for each team, you have all this information. And of course, as you move out, as the teams move out throughout the years, you'll get this information for each year. So you can monitor their performance. Now that you've seen the instructor side of things, let's look at the student side of things. So as an instructor, you can access any team by simply clicking on the team and you will see exactly what the team members are seeing. As if you were a participant, you can even make decisions for the team. Let's enter, for example, team one. Click on OK. And here you are in the simulation as if you were a team member of team one. So what you see here on the left-hand side is exactly what you see here. So prepare, analyze, decide, decide. So in prepare, you have your market, so your mission, key information on your mission, on your market, on your consumers, and your role. Your decisions. You have products and pricing. You have communication and contribution. And you have directives. Here, we explain the run process. So analyze, decide, run. Once you've prepared, you can start analyzing. So in, analyze, in the analyze section, we have dashboards. mix and dices, key drivers, 
And of course, as you progress throughout the year, they will appear here for each year. Company benchmarking. Market segments, segment size, segment growth, brand awareness, brand purchase intentions, brand unit market shares, brand value market shares, brand unit sales, and brand value sales. Products and pricing, brand sales and market shares, brand characteristics, brand price and unit cost, attribute weights and purchasing decisions, price elasticity on demand. You have communication, brand estimated communication expenditures by segment, brand estimated communication expenditures by media, segment media sensitivity, media share of voice. Distribution, distribution coverage by channel, distribution margin, sales force and distribution expenditures, shopping habits, relative challenge, channel size, market shares by channel, market shares by channel. Here, relative channel size and company reports. So company profit and loss statement in millions, brand contributions in millions, brand price and unit cost and margins, firm revenues and earnings in millions, brand market shares and volume and value, so once you're done analyzing, you can start making your decisions. We're making product decisions for Brand Mojo and Brand Moon. Pricing. Communication. Sales force and distribution decisions. And forecasting. And forecasting is not a decision, it's a tool to help participants estimate their next period revenues and contributions. So once you've done, you've done making your decisions, here you can review past and current decisions for both brands. So each year as you move on and then here you can check if you have any errors or warnings It will indicate the errors and warnings here. You have the participant guide as well that you can access here. Here you can print the reports from the analyze. The reports, you can print them here. Team ID is to pick a team name. And once you finish making your decisions and you're ready to move on to the next year, you simply click on run. And you will be moving to year two once you click on run. And so forth. And a very important thing is that only one participant per team.
can make decisions at a time. So only one team member can be on a decision, can be making a decision on a decision page. So if you want to make a decision and you're blocked because one of your team members are on the decision page, you simply click on team info and here it will be displayed what team member is on what decision page and you can disconnect them and take over the decisions. Lastly, when you're done and you want to leave, you do not click here to log out. You have to click here to log out. To properly log out, click here so that no one is blocked on decision pages and you're, and you're correctly logged off. You need to reach out to us for further help or assistance at help at stratix.com.